This is the wacky code from a help topic walkthrough, and I gave a link to it in the previous clip. It's a long, meaningless code sample, so I'm not going to go through it. I'll run the wacky code application to the first breakpoint and start exploring a view of the execution state at that point. You've probably noticed the yellow arrow that marks the current location in the call stack window or the source code. Consider this a theme. Here's the arrow in the threads window. And we'll check that, yes, everything's running in one process with another yellow arrow. But right now we're interested in stacks. Each stack frame represents a position in your source code. As you can imagine, when you're running multiple threads, different threads can be in the same position in your source code. I'll open the parallel stacks, and I'll use the main window because it's pretty big. In the bottom window, you have the traditional view of the call stack, and in the main window, you have a thread-friendly view of the same thing. We're stopped at method s.c, that was called from s.b, that was called from s.a, called from an anonymous method or lambda, called from the main method. I told you it was wacky code. There are 11 threads total, three of which are currently in the same methods, the same stack frames as the current thread. You might be wondering, why are there two groups that look the same? They come from different anonymous methods, similar to the example of anonymous methods messing up your stack frames in the previous clip. It will take some effort to keep lambda expression from torpedoing your parallel debugging stack frames. When I hover over one of the methods, I find more call stack and thread detail. I can control what detail I have by right-clicking and selecting things, like adding parameter values. The blue border indicates the stacks that contain the current thread, and the thread is indicated by the yellow arrow. I'll switch to the one thread that's still executing in the main method to illustrate. And then I'll switch back to the previous stack frame and thread. The Parallel Tasks window gives you detail on each task, including its current status and location. You can sort, but throughout these windows you need a light touch and a single click. My heavy-handed double-click fails to sort, even the reverse sort I'd expect. Did you notice the grayed-out flags that seem to be everywhere? All of the parallel debugging windows use a single set of flags to mark threads that you're interested in. To illustrate, I'll mark a couple of threads in parallel task, and then click the option to display only flagged threads. I'll click again to redisplay all threads. I can do this in any window, and the results affect all of the parallel debugging windows. This is a good point to check out watch windows, because there's a temp variable at the current location. The debugger works as usual, displaying the value of temp at the current location, the current line in the current thread. New in Visual Studio 2012, you can see the value of this variable in all threads through the parallel watch window. I'll make a new column for temp and see the value in all of the threads where the variable is used. All of the threads in the current stack frame. If I go back to the parallel stacks window, I can pick another thread that stopped at the same point in the code. The watch window displays the new value and the parallel watch moves the yellow arrow. But wait, wait, there's more. You can select the identifying column, and if you do that, you can add multiple selections, although you might have to widen the column to see the results. You can click any column to order. You can group by a column value or whether threads are flagged. You can hide unflagged threads. You can apply any Boolean filter. You can copy a row, you can copy a column, or you can copy the entire window to Excel or comma delimited format. You debug source code and data, and the value of all the trappings and bells and whistles of the debugger is simply to give you an idea of how that source code is executing and what's happening with your data, the variables, parameters, and fields of your application. So wouldn't it be great if in addition to that yellow arrow you're familiar with, source code could display information about multiple threads. It does, but you might have to look for the features. 
The yellow arrow includes a little tiny warning if you've switched stack frames since breaking into the debugger. Do you remember that I switched frames to demonstrate watch and parallel watch being responsive to the current frame? It's easy to forget and can lead to misunderstandings about your code. You can also turn on displaying thread information in the left source code gutter. You can turn it on in most of the parallel debugging windows. Once it's on, in addition to that yellow arrow you're familiar with and the markers for the previous locations in the current stack, there is an extra icon. Hovering over the icon shows all the threads at that current location or that stack frame. Phew, I've hardly scratched the surface. But if you've never managed more than a handful of threads, you probably don't care a lot because you don't yet understand just how hard the problem can be. I'm going to skip past a couple of breakpoints to where the wacky code shows a relatively complex map. I still haven't shown you the zoom or the view map or the task view or the method view. And did you notice the debug location bar that I've got open to keep me posted on the current process and thread and let me easily turn flags on and off? And because I didn't think I'd laid enough groundwork in multi-threading yet, I didn't show you the really cool stuff with a concurrency visualizer or freezing and thawing individual threads or using ETW to watch threads and processes in production. There is a lot to learn. As you face debugging issues in your multi-threaded code, these tools will let you tease apart a complex scenario, like this one. Take a little time to play with these features before you're in a crisis. But for this clip, right now, I'm out of time. <laughs>